So this patient's in sinus rhythm at the moment. Let's just keep an eye on it there. Now the patient's now gone into uh, ventricular fibrillation. And in ventricular fibrillation, there's fast, the machine's alarming to tell me, that's good, but I had noticed. So in ventricular fibrillation, there's fast, chaotic, uncoordinated contraction of areas of the myocardium. Different bits of the myocardium doing its own thing. It's twitching and quivering. And in this rhythm, there's no effective cardiac output. The blood pressure is going to be zero. Now the causes of this can be ischemic heart disease, such as myocardial infarction, severe or congenital heart disease, electrolyte imbalance, rapid changes in the levels of potassium or calcium in the blood, for example. It could be electrocution, severe hypoxia. And we notice the rhythm is irregular with poorly formed wide QRS complexes. And I would certainly classify this as a coarse ventricular fibrillation. But because we're not treating it, it will become finer over time. We'll get a finer ventricular fibrillation. So now we can see it's becoming finer, it's not as, the amplitude is less than it was. And the finer ventricular fibrillation is harder to treat. So we can see it's much finer now. And the longer we don't treat this, the finer it will tend to become. the finer it is, the more difficult it is to respond to defibrillation. This version is quite a lot coarser now, so it should respond to defibrillation more readily. Patient, of course, in ventricular fibrillation is going to be very rapidly unconscious, no pulses, agonal or no respirations. As a first aid treatment, we would have to give CPR, but then the treatment for fibrillation is electrical defibrillation. Now this rhythm is a ventricular tachycardia, VT. Very rapid ventricular contraction, but with a degree of coordination. Now this is quite a severe ventricular tachycardia, and this patient will probably be unconscious. But in some ventricular tachycardias, the patient can remain conscious for periods of time, indeed hours although they'll feel very unwell. And if we don't treat this condition, this ventricular tachycardia, it will become a ventricular fibrillation as the rhythm gets finer. And we have to treat this with defibrillation. It's one of the shockable rhythms.
So there's only two shockable rhythms, there's ventricular fibrillation and this one which is ventricular tachycardia. If the patient's not unconscious, we have to, of course, anaesthetise them prior to administering the shock. Now this patient is in asystolic cardiac arrest. There is no systolic contraction at all. The ventricles and indeed the atria are not moving. And asystole, a means without. And of course, this is the rhythm you would get with uh, anyone who was dead. But if someone's gone into this rhythm recently, we would try to, try to reverse it by inducing a shockable rhythm such as ventricular fibrillation. So that's asystolic cardiac arrest. Now there's another type of cardiac arrest called pulseless electrical activity. And that's exactly what it says. There is no pulse, but there is still electrical activity going on in the heart. And the waveform of that electrical activity can vary quite a bit, but it could look something like this, like almost like a normal, in this case, sinus bradycardia. But the key thing is, there is no kinetic movement of the heart. So the depolarization of the ventricular and atrial myocardium is going on as normal, but the heart muscle is unable to respond to that. So we would need to try and correct the underlying causes of this. And indeed, that's true with any cardiac arrest. We need to try and correct the underlying causes. And this is where the five H's and the five T's come in as causes of cardiac arrest that we can use to prevent cardiac arrest, but we can also use it to try and revert a patient who is in cardiac arrest. And the five H's as causes of cardiac arrest are hypoxia, not enough oxygen getting to the myocardium, hypovolemia, not enough blood getting to the myocardium, hypothermia, when the body temperature is too low, hypo or hyperkalemia, both can cause cardiac arrest, whether the potassium is too low or too high. And the fifth H is hydrogen ions, which of course is the cause of acidosis. So if there's more hydrogen ions, the pH will be lower because the patient will be more acidotic. And then the five T's as causes of cardiac arrest. One is tension pneumothorax, where there's a buildup of pressure in the pleural space. Cardiac tamponade, T for tamponade, where there's increase in pressure within the pericardial sac, constricting the heart. T for toxins and potential drugs, of course. And then T for thrombosis, which can be pulmonary thrombosis. And T for thrombosis, which can be coronary thrombosis. So this shows the importance of not just looking at the monitor, but assessing the patient's overall condition and palpating central and as well as possibly peripheral pulses.